Hi, I'm Christian. Um, and I th have what I think is kind of uh, crazy, but also a little bit of a good idea. Um, and before I can explain it all, um, I, I'm gonna tell you the backstory. When I was a little kid, I joined Cub Scouts and I liked it. I liked the adventure. I liked my troop. I liked arts and crafts. Um, it was fun. I started as a bobcat, and then I was a wolf cub, and then a bear cub, and then finally a wee below. And then I quit. And I'm not totally sure why I quit. Maybe I was more into sports, or maybe my dad was less interested in scouts than I was, um, or maybe it just felt more like doing paperwork at that point than going on fun adventures. Um, so for whatever reason, I quit. And I've kind of always regretted that decision. I've kind of regretted that decision for like the last 20 years. So here's my idea. Today I turn 30 and I want some adventure, but I can't become an official Boy Scout. So I'm gonna do it all on my own. I'm gonna do the entire curriculum of Scouts from Cub all the way up to Eagle in one year. It's called Old Scout. And this is the first episode, Bobcat. <laughs> up until the mid 60s, there weren't super strict age limits on scouting. So you could actually become a scout as an adult. Then they changed some of the requirements, which made it virtually impossible to advance through Eagle Scout and complete Boy Scouts after you turned 18. So as a 30 year old, I can't actually become an official Boy Scout, which is fine because I'm less interested in the official title of Boy Scout and more interested in having the fun adventures and earning merit badges and all that kind of stuff. So in accordance with that, our old Scout curriculum is less like the 2018 ranks and requirements and more like a customized version of the ranks and requirements from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, it's more our old scout curriculum and less the official Boy Scout curriculum. Also just the books and badges and all the little tiny things uh, from then are prettier uh, and the requirements are frankly a little more dangerous and fun. Um, so with that said, here's how it'll all work. Today, I'll start Cub Scouts and hopefully earn my Bobcat badge. Then over the next month or so, I'll work towards the next rank of Cub Scouts, my Wolf badge, then my Bear badge, then my Lion badge. Then I'll complete Cub Scouts and show that I'm ready to become a Boy Scout by earning my Weebelows badge. Um, again, this is how it worked in the 50s uh, and pretty different than how it would work if you joined today or when I originally joined in the 90s. So then it's on to the real deal Boy Scouts. I'll start by earning the rank of Tenderfoot, work through the requirements to become a second class scout, and then a first class scout. We'll be doing a lot of camping and hiking during this part. After that is when I'll start working to earn my merit badges in order to achieve the ranks of Star Scout, Life Scout, and eventually Eagle Scout. Then I'm done. Then I turn 31, and I go back to doing 31-year-old stuff again. This is Julie's and my studio. This is our progress chart for the wolf badge. It's a dodecagon. Here are all our merit badge books. Bird study, camping, cooking, first aid, life-saving, pioneering, safety, and many more. Here's our wolf book. Here's our bear book. Here's our lion book. Here's a cook kit. Standard issue, a wooden kazoo. <laughs> Official scout canteen. This is my uniform. Hi, mom. Hey. <laughs> oh, you're in the shirt. <laughs> yes. So, thank you for making me this shirt. <laughs> you're welcome. The hardest part was was definitely the buttonholes. The, the buttonholes. Buttons. For the front? Huh? For the front buttons? Yeah, and the pocket buttons. Because hmm. the, the fabric 
is really thick and the buttons are pretty unusual. And so to get the buttons spaced properly and the buttonholes spaced properly was tricky. Okay. Thanks, Mom. All right, honey. Okay. Bye. bye. Uh, I would like to become a bobcat scout, bobcat scout, bobcat. A bobcat. Um, Julie, what are the requirements for me to become a bobcat? If you are at least eight years old, but not yet. I am 11. at least, I am, I am eight. But not at yet. At least eight. But not yet 11. Well. You may become a cub scout. <laughs> the things you do to become a bobcat. Bo bobcat. Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> Have to know the law of the pack. Yep. Okay. The Cub Scout promise. Weeblos. The meaning of Weeblos. Mm -hmm. The Cub Scout sign and hand clasp. And the Cub Scout motto and salute. So all we have to do is go back in time and make me eight years old. At least. At least. But not yet 11. But not yet 11. And then I got to memorize some stuff and then we do a little ceremony of sorts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Meeting adjourned? Adjourned. Candles for casting spells. I have to get those into this board somehow. Um, and they have to be at like a 45 degree angle. And now we present a very serious bobcat ceremony. Let us begin. These three candles represent the Cub Scout promise. This is a promise that binds all cubs together in a common good. It is through this promise that we are guided and directed. However, the promise is made by each cub and it is up to him to see that he follows it. I now light the white candle. This candle represents both the Cub Scout motto and the opening line of the Cub Scout promise. I promise to do my best. The second candle is red. The same color of the blood of the cub, who promises to follow the first part of the promise, to be square. Yes, square to himself and others at all times, even when it is not easy to be square. Next, we light the third candle, which is blue. Blue stands for loyalty and obedience. You must learn to obey before you can expect others to obey you. This candle stands for the second part of the promise, to obey the law of the pack. Together, the three candles represent the Cub Scout promise. Please repeat after me. I promise to do my best. I promise to do my best. To be square. To be square. And to obey the law of the pack. And to obey the law of the pack. In the center of the board, we have three white candles representing the law of the pack. Please repeat after me. The Cub Scout follows Akela. The Cub Scout follows Akela. The Cub Scout helps the pack go. The 
Cub Scout helps the pack go. The pack helps the Cub Scout grow. The pack helps the Cub Scout grow. The Cub Scout gives goodwill. The Cub Scout gives goodwill. In Cub Scouting, Akela means good leader and represents anyone who has shown that he or she is able and willing to help you. Most good leaders have first learned to be good followers. That's why the first part of the Law of the Pack asks you to learn to follow. Follow those you can trust. The Law of the Pack in brief signifies that a Cub Scout follows, helps, and gives. Have you mastered the Cub Scout handshake? I have. Please perform the Cub Scout sign and explain its meaning. The two fingers represent the two parts of the promise, to be square and to obey the law of the pack. Correct. The three closed fingers hold an additional secret meaning, fair, happy, and game, which you can also remember through the three white candles. Please perform the salute. What is the Cub Scout motto? Do your best. Yes. Another boy may do something better than the way you do it, but if you do your best, you need not be ashamed. You have shown that you have learned those things necessary to become a Bobcat. This Bobcat pin will let all your friends know that you are a Cub Scout. Wear it with pride. You have now started up the Cub Scout trail. You may light the Bobcat candle. Welcome to pack 30. Because I'm 30. Yes. Investiture is closed. Cut. Did you just add that? <laughs> I did. That? I did. <laughs>